So what we want to understand in this section is number one, how to build regression in Excel, and number two, how to read the ANOVA tables. Okay, so we would create some hypothetical data. Let us say we have a series of data X and a series of data points. Let's call them as Y. Okay, so I'm going to create some random numbers in X and Y. So we have the X values. And in the same fashion, we will also create the Y values. Okay, so this is X and this is Y. Now what we want to do is we want to see if there is a relationship between data set X and data set Y. So there are multiple ways in which that relationship could be computed. The first metric that we've learned is covariance. So we can calculate covariance between X and we can calculate covariance between Y. The covariance is 101.111 or 111. So the covariance is positive. That means the data points are positively connected with each other. But apart from that, it does not tell us anything else. It does not tell us what is the strength of the linear relationship. So the next number that we can calculate is correlation. So correlation between X and Y correlation appears to be one. That means it appears as if the data is perfectly positively correlated. It's a complete linear relationship. They're moving in a linear fashion. So again, it is telling us that the data is linearly connected with each other, but it is not telling us that how much is the magnitude of Y given the value of X. Are you following this? And to do that, we will have to calculate or regression or the slope coefficient. So I'm going to calculate slope now using the data analysis function in the Excel. So we'll make use of the regression function here. So the first thing it is asking us is what is the Y input values? So I'm selecting the entire data range of Y. Then which are the X values? So I'm selecting X. Then, because we've also included the labels, I'm going to tick onto this and we can have the new, the solution in the new worksheet, which is fine. And preferably if you can get a line fit plot and what we have here, this table, this is called as the analysis of variance table or ANOVA table. Have you learned about this earlier? So now let us look at some of the numbers carefully. The first thing that we would look at is the data set, which is available here. It says the intercept coefficient is two. It says the intercept coefficient is two and slope coefficient is two. How do we read this number? So using this intercept and slope, essentially it would help us build an equation. Now see how the equation is. Y is equal to, since the intercept is two, we will say two plus two X. And of course, after this, there would be a random error term, which we generally assume to be zero. So this is how we read this. There is no standard error because now if you would observe the original data, 10 into two plus two, 22, all the values were exactly multiplication of two X plus two. And therefore we do not have any standard errors here. Are you following this? Yes. If correlation is one, and uh, every data point is on the line, which would be, which would happen if correlation is one, then that means there is no difference between the predicted value and the actual value. And if there is no difference between these two values, then automatically standard error is going to be zero. Let's look at some of these observations. First is R square for simple regression. This R square is same as the square of correlation coefficient. What was the correlation coefficient? one. So square of correlation coefficient is again going to be one, but we read this as hundred percent. It's easier way of interpreting R square. That means variation in X is being able to explain hundred percent variation in Y. Should I repeat this again? What R square tells us is that variation in X is being able to explain hundred percent variation in Y. And the easiest way to read this is that the quality of your regression is hundred percent at every data point is fitting onto the line. And have you seen this number before? SS, this is SST, the total variance, the value of a particular point, Y minus Y bar 
square. This was regression sum of square and this is SST. Do you remember this part? So this what we have here, this is RSS and this is SST and the SSE which is your error in this case is 0 and R square there was an alternate formula available if you remember this we said RSS divided by SST so RSS is given as 1 to 1 3 SST is given as 1 to 1 3 and therefore R square again is 100% are we doing okay but let us manipulate this data a little bit now so I'm going to go back to the original values but this time around let us not have the points exactly on the straight line let us make this as 25 let's make this as 34 and this as 67 let's make this as 45 37 okay so it's a little bit more distorted now 17 now using this data we will build a new regression but this time we know that correlation coefficient is not 1 which means we are going to have some amount of error in the calculations in the regression. So y is correct, x is correct, label is correct. And we have the new ANOVA table now. Now your SSR or RSS which is regression sum of squares is 1414. The residual error which we refer to as SSE. SSE is 101.13 and SST which is the total sum of square is given as 1515. Now let us see if R square comes out to be a correct number. Regression sum of square 1414 divided by total sum of squares 1515. It would come out to be 0 0.933. Is it matching? Plus what if we take the square of correlation so if i take square of this value again it would match with your r square which is 93 percent for simple regression the square of correlation coefficient is same as coefficient of determination now we have x-axis coefficient of 2.15 and intercept of minus 2.8 so your equation is y is equal to minus 2.8 plus 2.15x plus a random error term. And roughly the variation in x is being able to explain what percent variation in y? Variation in x is being able to explain what percentage of variation in y? 93%. Are we doing fine here? Do you want to ask any questions? Have you learned the meaning of this p-value? p-value is what? Lowest level of significance at which null can be rejected. So if we decide to do a testing at 10%, if we decide to do testing at 1%, will we reject or fail to reject for intercept? If the significance level, if you are doing testing for the intercept and significance level is given to us as 10 percent is p value is significance level more than p value or less than p value less significance level is less than p value so what should be the conclusion if significance level is less than p value then conclusion is fail to reject however if you decide to do testing for the in coefficient x axis or x coefficient then the p value is how much 0 0.001 at significance level of 10 percent what would be the conclusion reject we can reject the null hypothesis which means from a statistical perspective your x axis coefficient seems to be of reasonably good quality because the p value is very very low and a lower p value would result into higher t statistic and higher t statistic means automatically most of the hypothesis test you would be able to reject. Let's look at the residual output now. Observation 1. Predicted value is 18.78. Can you tell me how is this calculated? Same formula using the y is equal to minus 2.8 plus 2.15. But the actual value was how much? Actual value was 17. And therefore we will have an error of minus 1.78. 
if you take square of all these errors add them up then what will you get so this error squared so i'm squaring all the errors and then i'm going to add up all these errors it is giving us 101.13 which is matching with the sse sum of squared errors fine